Uh, I just have a question about the empirical. Uh, do you use this kind of buffers uh, to try to assess the effect? Is it possible that you have some kind of intersection between buffers that you are having some kind of contamination between one area and another area? How do you control this? Uh, in that moment, we don't control uh, on that, but, but we can check. In this point, it's important. Hmm. I'm sorry, can you show us the events that you plot again? This one, the first one? Yeah. The basin, yeah. In the left, I think there seems to be a bit of a free track. So yeah. uh, perhaps it would be nice to check something like the rough estimator for honest difference and differences to allow for free tracks and we get a more clean estimation. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yes, we know that, that we have some differences uh, before the policy implementation, but, but the, the trend is clearly that, that there is a jump after the policy implementation that increased the total number of, of university students in those localities. But yes, we, we have to check about these differences before. So, can you show your results for completion? Yeah. How do you interpret this increase? This increase, uh, first of all, could be a composition effect of students that can enroll at the university in those localities. And so they are more students. Yeah. And then they complete lab. Yes. And you don't find this for first generation? Right? No, for first generation, no. We have the opposite effect in this case. Then, so how, how about your story? Oh. Yes, at first the, the thing that, that we discuss is that, that there are worse students that they enter at the university when this campus open that maybe they, they don't study if they don't have the campuses near their, their localities. But maybe these students that that they don't have the opportunity to come to the capital to study and they have, have a lower cost to study, maybe they are... If it's that there are like two types of students that gain access to mm -hmm. Right, the third generation ones were the ones that were good, but they didn't have access, and then with the expansion they gained access and they... And then there's another type of students maybe that... Maybe were high income and they didn't have access to universities in, I don't know, I don't know in, in, in the capital. Hmm. And then maybe they move to other cities to... Yes, they move or there. maybe... Yeah. Yes, they move or, or they have the campus near the, their house, uh, their home. So... Yeah, but this... They, maybe well, they enroll at... Our generation, they... Most of them, they had access before, right? The, the new ones that are gaining access here, they are worse in terms of... Yes, on average, yes. But, but when we compare, but when we analyze what happened with these first generation students, we observe that it's an increase. So maybe yeah, there are I, more... I really yeah. do. I just, I think that there are two different stories, these two graphs. Yeah things about two different groups that mm. are gaining access mm -hmm. and I think it would be interesting to explore like who are these yeah. people, they're like this group of, and this other group and there are very different results for them mm -hmm. and then maybe if you exploit these different groups we're going to have a better idea of what's going on in the labor market because then your labor market results they seem very noisy yeah see anything there, but maybe if you focus on these different groups, you're going to yes, it's a good idea yeah, to have a, a clear story. Uh -huh. and Thank you. That I have was whether I should be worried about this, because uh, you look at total enrollments for high school students, for yeah, high school students, right? Students that were attending high school in that region. Yeah, in that so local. I'm worried that students are sorting in high school, they're moving to those regions in high school, how... Ah, uh, yeah, so how we... Yes, yeah, so we don't control uh, of that, but it's important to, to discuss it in the paper. But b because the information that we have is the locality where the people do high school. We don't know where the people are born. Yeah, 
uh, so. <laughs> If you have information about migration for high school, maybe if you tell me old people, they usually don't move for high school, mm -hmm. then that's fine, but then it would be nice to, to have this. Okay, great, thank you. What's the definition of first generation student? Like a first generation student is a student that it's so the first time you go to higher education? No, no. It is the one that enrolled at the university and their parents did not enroll at the university or tertiary educational level. So you have 80% of first generation students in Uruguay? Is that it? Uh, on the maps, we say, yeah. It's a, high num it's a high percentage of first generation students at the university. Students who go into university, yeah. Parents, their, their parents don't have higher education. They go better than students that because they can be the choose with their completion. Yeah. So because you have eighty percent of first generation students, right? Yeah. And then you have um, you have a, a positive effect for the probability of graduation. Uh huh. For them, uh, yeah. A negative effect for like the general population. Of yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you have eighty percent of um, first generation, so you, you must have a really negative effect for the other group. Mm -hmm. Or I think so. Yes, yeah, so it's the thing we we find in the. Okay. Uh, yeah. How are you prospering your strangers? Is that at the geographical reason? At the locality level. How many, how many localities? Uh, 140 localities. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, you follow up on what you were saying earlier. Um, so it would be nice to have a normative statement on whether on average it's better off for everyone to have. Um, so if whether like having students that enroll and do not complete, whether that counts out resources for other students, that if it was more selective, maybe there would be higher quality education for fewer students. Uh, that's one thing. And the other one is uh, the graph on uh, on, um, on your employment outcomes. Is it conditional on finishing high school? Uh, on finishing no. It's not conditional. It's for the average of population between 21 years old and 40 years old. And on the labor market outcomes, we use the national household survey. On the other outcomes, we use uh, the administrative data. So th there is a big difference between the, the sample we use here. So you cannot condition it on high school? Uh, we can do it. We, we didn't do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember about the program. Is there like a specific year that you can apply, like just like finish the course or you can apply the first year of the college? You need to have uh, at least 20% of the, cor the, the courses and no more than 80%. Okay, because my, my doubt is like, is there's kind of worse selection, like the worst students that they don't have like a, a kind of job, an like internship, for example, they have like an opportunity cost lower and they decide, oh, I'm trying to do this, to apply to this program because I don't have an internship to it. So I go there with kind of hope to have a, a better position in the job market when I come back. And the guy that are the best students, they are ready, like have like, some kind of internship, but I'm not losing my money, my internship in Brazil to do this kind of adventure in the Yeah, it's a really strong assumption, right? That we're making. Like really strong because remember that those are uh, students from federal universities. So they are already on average um, better than the average students in Brazil. So yeah, I think it's a very strong assumption. I, I'm, I'm not sure if this. <laughs> Part of the fact, and also the effort to understand the mechanism why you have this, this result. Part is, of course, a bit specific, maybe if your channel is correct, because it was an unlucky macro, you kind of being a better leader, perhaps, or something. But 
But the comment I want to make more generally is that I have had this discussion with Shin Iko and other books. Sometimes in, in economics, uh, we, we tend to be very precise about sort of small analytical exercises, and then we have difficulty integrating with the bigger questions. So, for, for a second, if I try to put your research in a bigger perspective, and the type of effort that moral hosting coordinates and the commitment to equity institute, etc., this is a problem that the impact the evaluation gives us negative, which is horrible. You spend a lot of money, and if I do the distributed analysis, probably this goes to middle class or upper middle class kids. The yep. guy who did this should go to jail, to jail and get shot according to more general metric on how you allocate public money and public effort. Am I too far from reality? No, no, no. You are completely <laughs> uh, <laughs> the reality with your analysis. Yeah, it, it's um, there is a big debate in Brazil about this this program. Uh, and there is a lot of there are a lot of evidence also that many students uh, did not study at all because there was no rule uh, to the minimum number of courses you need to do. Uh, there was no no requirement of quality. For example, you need to enroll and also get approved in some courses. And as I mentioned, you are basically giving a lot of money to young people to go to Europe. So uh, if you take, for example, um, one scholarship that is 1,200 uh, 1, euros to go to Portugal is two times the minimum salary in Portugal. And maybe this student uh, is, the, is more than the per capita income in their household. So yeah, it's, there, are, there are a lot of discussion on how the program was created and, yeah, and how it was uh, the monitoring of the program and the, the rules, etc. Um, yeah, one thing that we cannot observe here is that uh, many students can uh, can could increase the the cultural capital, the the um, networks. They could influence peers, for example, if they had a a, a brother, a sister that saw the uh, him going abroad and say, oh, I, w I also want to, to have a, a international experience when I do my university. So this could be a positive fact, but of, we cannot observe this here. But yeah, I totally agree with your comments. I think one following up on this, I think one important thing that it's important to clarify is that your IV is measuring the effect on compliers, right? So yeah. Those are the marginal students that gain access because of the random yeah. competitiveness. Right? Yeah. So this program it might be good for people at the top, right? So there. Yeah. So I think this is what's important for you to sell the paper mm -hmm. to make yeah a more general contribution because it's not. So yeah. It might be the. Because that will be. Of, a part of, yeah. yeah. That will be a group of uh, our stakers here. That the the guys that have super high uh, entrance exam scores okay, and they probably are people from rich families and uh, have very good background for example but these are not the guys that we are capturing here yeah two things so about the program the first is that in the first year like that it was really hard to get into the program because you didn't only have to apply but you needed to have a research program with a professor at your own university. Mm -hmm. so you had really little uh, uh, few students going and like students that were committed to uh, to, to to study abroad. Um, second <coughs> is like on the cost of Australia, I know that you knew the universities. So okay. you had a list of universities that you would you could choose from. So I don't know if this changes your results in way, but maybe it's, it's good to control for it. And the third thing is, like, can't you maybe um, do a regression controlling for your graduation and see if the results hold? The university didn't provide a year for graduation. Yes. <laughs> if, I, if I can do this very minor follow up of my previous comment, as I mentioned, some people are trying to compare the whole set of social institutions in a country and some sort of application that allows to make decisions at the margin. And that's particularly relevant for countries like Argentina, Brazil, where the budget is, you know, these are countries that have 
price down the so we have continued to avoid expanding. Uh, and in this case, would be exactly the opposite of the previous one. Because it, it gives you a positive effect. The amount of money spent in the policy is probably small because this is the regulation. Or they not sure what the effect there is at the margin of commodities, etc. And then it distributes the debt for the negotiated corporation. So, just my minor comment would be every paper should finish with two lines on these two additional assets, usually not considered the impact relation, which in the previous paper, both of them wrong. In this intervention, seems that was both right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think, um, yeah, when you have such a a controversial policy as a, a very large affirmative action policy as this one it's really important to put in a larger picture and have very i think convincing rigorous evidence on like where it works and where it does not like there are some aspects of this policy that need yeah i have worked on that too like some aspects in the design that can be improved and we also talk about that but like the overall picture is that this policy has been very successful in decreasing inequality in access to universities yeah chico it would have been even more convincing in terms of uh, human capital accumulation pre-college if you had uh, data on these people's uh, test scores in you or something like that no, the problem is that Prova Brasil for high school concluders is was not sensitary for yeah until 2017. So uh, yeah, we have a small sample problem there. We try to use a name. But then there is, uh, it's not ideal either because <laughs> there is a large difference in take up. So then composition get really mixed up. So every time we try to, to do something with the college, uh, with grades, we don't get a clean effect that is not mixed up with composition, things like that. But yeah, we are trying to get a sample for which we can do this. But yeah, we haven't been super successful so far. Uh, People start exiting to uh, public high schools. So, uh, My other paper. <laughs> yeah, no, I have another paper that shows that people uh, move from private to public schools in response to this policy. So in this time period, uh, th that's why also we stopped in 2015. Because for this time, yeah, they need three years. They have to be in high school for three years. So yeah, in my sample, there's yeah no endogenous starting to high school, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's uh, relevant for, because there are some sites, but maybe also the creation of new campus during this period. Yeah. So for example, you can have a university yeah. in one state and then the university create more campus in different cities. So I don't know how this would affect how so people can get yeah, so this expansion of college seats is, I mean, the idea is that the policies are not correlated, right? They are uh, orthogonal to each other. We can control for this. So we can observe an opening of a campus or the number of seats. We have control for this in one of the specifications, but it doesn't change anything. So the idea is that, yeah. And do you know in which states or regions the, the effect is stronger, for example? <laughs> If you drop out, they they get like yeah. you have a high yeah. impact. They Sao Paulo that the guys have like this communication more clear than in like, a small city or states of northwest that the guys probably have more difficult to know that they have this kind of change in their legislation. I know that the larger expansion is actually in the northeast. So like the south already had quotas, but like the northeast, ha I don't know if the effect comes from but like the large uh yeah the national law affected more universities of the northeast but yeah this is a good point yeah Don't, uh, <laughs> let me see if i have time yeah so i will take the questions and then i answer yeah places where you have good private colleges and then you have an outside option that is good in places that you don't have a good private college. So if, if the drop, if the percentage of people um, um, not taking the, the, the name in, in those localities is different, it's an indicative that um, people are just going to private colleges, right? 
and I would just see if they pay them in, in the year they graduate. Is that it? Yeah. Can't you like see if they take them in the Because the first thing that came to my mind it, it is the thing like yeah. taking a gap year or something. So maybe just to say, you know, maybe this mechanism might yeah, be right, or maybe that mechanism is right. So I'm gonna take the questions and then come back, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if that's correct, but uh, around the same time we saw many prophecies in uh, in the Syrian also had an increase in supply of private. So I don't know if the displacement of private uh, would happen because of a crowd out of, uh, you know, actually not a crowd out, but it had more supply of private university. I'll see it over time, which I think will be a counting in the equation. Um, or the demand. So there is a part which kind of demand and freedom by education. There is a part which is supply. You just have more universities. Private universities uh, in Brazil, and I think this is since the 90s, right? Yeah. Since the end of the 90s. So I don't know about the scale. I just the, the, the introduction, but the expansion of private universities uh, should be, uh, let's say, controlled in Europe. Yeah, specification. Yeah. There was any other question here? Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, your estimation relies on a broad threat assumption. I'm not entirely sure what it's a control group here. I mean, to whom are we using that with these parallel trends? Could you clarify that for me? Yeah. Okay. So first, regarding the displacement of private colleges, and I think it's this is a good idea, Lee, to to do this heterogeneity, whether they are a good substitute in the private system. So. The problem is that to do that, we need the uh, data, the restricted data from Sadapi. So we are still entering with the project there because then we really need to connect individuals and follow them later on. So yeah, we are doing this, but as you know, it takes uh, time. But I think, I mean, if we want to take this project to the next level, we are going to, yeah, we are, uh, we are going to do that. We are doing that. It's just that, yeah, it gets a lot complicated when you, yeah, leave the public data and go to the restricted data. Regarding Renata's question about the increasing supply of private universities, I think the answer is similar to, my answer to Rodrigo, Rodrigo asked about the supply of public universities because there was Reuni, which was the big program of expansion. And my answer to that is that, I mean, I think this matters for human capital accumulation, but for this to bias my estimates, they would need to be correlated to the exact pattern of adoption of affirmative action. Um, I mean, I think I have to show you, I, I don't think this will be a problem. I haven't controlled yet for like supply of private uh, seats. I think I, I, I should do that, yeah. I controlled, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. There were, yeah, we, what we do is we control for, there are a lot of policies for public colleges like Fies, Reuni, all those things that we try to account for. But yeah, there is also the private universities that, yeah. <laughs> Higher education is a fascinating field in Brazil because there are like so many reforms, as you saw, and yeah. But you were right. This is important. And around in my last answer to control versus treatment here. So like treated institutions are the ones that expand the most, right? The ones that had the lower the lower level of quotas uh, before the policy, and that then they were more affected by the national policy. And then in this case, our treated institutions are not institutions, but micro regions, right? Municipalities, we aggregate institutions, but in essence, the, the treatment is at the institution level. The treated are the ones that were not affected by the national reform, basically because they already had uh, affirmative action policies before, okay? We also have an alternative treatment of state universities that they had no quotas before and so on, but this is our, like we chose this as our main, yeah. So yeah, I conclude here, thank you.